before I talk about how to install Python, let me discuss a little bit of the history of Python. And then in the previous video, we talked about why you should learn Python. Let me also tell you about some of the cons of Python or some of the disadvantages of Python. So Python was developed by Guido van Rossum. He was a Dutch programmer who was born in 1956. He's still alive. He conceived the language in the 1980s but didn't really release it or reveal it publicly until 1990 and revealed it as open source. And open source simply means that others can add to it and build upon it and redistribute it. His goals, though, in developing this language was to make it multi-paradigm. That was both a structured language as well as an object-oriented programming language and also functional programming. And functional programs are based on lambda calculus. The idea in functional programming is that functions or methods can be used as arguments and can return functions as a result. We're seeing more and more functional programming. C Sharp, for example, has added lambda expressions in recent versions of it probably inspired by Python. Python is also what we call a dynamically typed language. We don't have to specify the data type of variables. Now, there's a lot of programming snobs out there that will look at that and turn their nose up at that and saying, well, variables need to be typed to help restrict errors. Python does a really good job, though, of determining what the type is based on context and kind of unusually allows variables to take on different types at different periods in a program. He wanted the language to be highly extensible, which Python is, but mostly he wanted it to be fun to use. And that's part of where the name Python comes from. Now the logo appears as two intertwined snakes. But Python is not named after snakes. Guido Van Rossum was a Monty Python fan, Monty Python being the British comedy troupe. And he named the language after his favorite comedy troupe. Now it's kind of interesting that languages today mostly have integrated development environments or IDEs. And the IDE allows kind of a one-stop place to develop, to debug, and to package a program or an application. Visual Studio is an IDE for C Sharp. Android Studio is the IDE for creating Android applications. Xcode is the IDE for Swift and creating iOS applications. But in Python, the IDE is called Idle. The speculation is it was named after Eric Idle. Eric Idle being one of the members of the Monty Python troupe. I don't believe Guido von Rossum has ever declared that to be true. He also wanted Python to be simpler and less cluttered than other languages. And it certainly is that, in my opinion. And he wanted the code to be very readable. And that's one nice thing about learning Python. It's easy to look at somebody else's code and be able to make heads or tails out of it because the code is simpler, less cluttered, and therefore more readable. Now, in 2000, Python 2.0 was released. And in 2008, Python 3.0 was released. Python 2 is still around. However, uh, it is being discontinued in April 2020 in such there will no longer be any updates to it or support for it, nor will there be any support for anything less than Python 3.5. Right now in our classroom here at South Mountain, we're using 3.6.4. The most recent version as of tonight creating this video is Python 3.8.1. It really won't make a lot of difference which version you use. Now we talked about the advantages of Python and why you should learn Python in the previous video, but there are some disadvantages to Python compared to other languages. One of the biggest one of those, I think, is that it's interpreted at runtime and not compiled. Compiled languages take your source code and creates a binary version of that. We might call it an executable or exe file. And because it's interpreted at runtime, makes the Python program a little slower than something that's compiled into the machine language of the platform. The advantage of that is that it allows to be run on multiple platforms. The other disadvantage is the code is generally unprotected. It's basically your source code that you're putting out there. and It's not binary code where you're protecting your code and others can't see it. Now there are some tools out there such as Py to exe that allows you to create an executable and some other methodologies to protecting your code. 
the idea that it's simpler is a positive but can also be a negative and that is it can make other languages a little bit harder to learn because they're not as simple. But I think that Python does a great job of teaching you the principles of programming, that there are conditions, that there are loops, variables, lists, strings. We'll learn about all those things this semester, and all those things are in every language. And there often are better ways to do some tasks. So Python is not uh, a, a be-all and end-all for all tasks. We will look at how to make GUI apps with TK Inter in Python, but C Sharp, if you're going to make apps for, for Windows, is really a much better language uh, to do that in, in the Visual Studio environment. And like for, for Mac, Xcode along with Swift would be the way you would create Mac apps. And while you, you can use uh, some added libraries to do some gaming with Python, Things like C Sharp and the Unity Engine are a much better way to do that. So don't think of Python as the best language for every task. It simply is not, but it is a great language to learn. Let's talk about how to install Python. You're going to go to www.python.org. And once you get there, there's a menu bar at the top, and you can read about Python. But the downloads area is where you would go to install it. Now, you're probably going to install for Windows, but you're going to, and the most recent version is Python 3.8.1. You're welcome to install that. If you want to install an older version, you click this View Full List of Downloads. And here you can install for Linux or Unix, Mac, or is also an option for other. But if you scroll down, here are various versions that you can install. In our classroom, we are running Python 3.6.4. So you might want to download that and install that version. You would simply click the download. So here you can run the Mac install if you're running a Macintosh. Assuming you're running Windows 10, I would install the Windows x86-64. And you can do that as an embedded, embeddable zip file, as an executable installer, or a web-based installer. I'm going to click the web-based installer and say run. And it will install the Python uh, program as well as the idle in, uh, development environment. That's really all there is to installing Python.